copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Los Angeles County Sheriff's Office calling all cars. Attention all cars. Broadcast 255 regarding a missing person. Be on the lookout for a woman described as blonde, 5 feet 5 inches, weight about 140 pounds. This woman speaks with a strong accent. May be headed for Yugoslavia. That's all. Rose and Pussy. Whatever the major nations of the world decide to do, if anything, about the limitation of armament, this much is a certainty. There can be no disarmament in the modern war against the enemies of society. Officers of the law would be battling against overwhelming odds where they forced to fight with obsolete guns, antiquated automobiles, and inferior gasoline that shows a yellow streak when called upon to meet an emergency. They must have the best of every kind of equipment. That is why it means so much to you as an individual motorist to know that Rio Grande Crack is the gasoline chosen for this vital, distinctive public service. To know that wherever it is sold, Rio Grande Crack supplies the quicker getaway greater speed, maximum power and mileage for more police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other emergency equipment wherever it is sold than any other brand. It is important to know that like your city and county officials, the heads of your California state and federal governments also use this superior, equal to every emergency gasoline. It's no farther away than the nearest red and white Rio Grande dealer who specializes in Rio Grande crack, the most highly and justly recommended gasoline sold in the West. The story we are to hear tonight was secured through the cooperation of the office of Sheriff Eugene Biscalouse of Los Angeles County. Sheriff Biscalouse is in San Francisco on official business and has consented to open our program from the studios of KSFO. quickest ways to sour the milk of human kindness is to hit a man in the pocketbook. However, in the story we are to hear tonight, we find a novel situation wherein the victims of a very clever swindler refused to believe that they had been swindled. The public should be aware of the depredations of a vast army of clever people who are constantly using their wits to live at the expense of their fellow men. Had many of the persons whom we shall hear about tonight been more alert to the operation of this type of criminal, a great deal of money would have been saved, and many words of sympathy would not have been wasted on an unappreciative crook. I sincerely hope that tonight's story will bring home the fact that crime does not pay. opens in the office of the Bunko Squad of the Sheriff's Department. Deputy A.W. Willie and John Pennywit receive a visitor. Frankly, I can't understand the attitude of Sheriff Biscaroos. I told him a woman had been kidnapped, and he sent me to the Bunko Squad. It's insulting to a fine woman. She is the most idealistic woman I have ever met. Everyone in Hollywood believes in her. She's tremendously rich. She is... She's a macaroni queen. And she did a little paper hanging. What do you mean by that expression, paper hanging? You've been sent to us because even if she is a spaghetti queen, Thanks. when she goes around hanging paper... Excuse me. Deputy Willie means she passed bad checks. That's just a slang expression for it. But she's been kidnapped and forced to cash these checks. Just a minute. I know you're quite idealistic in your opinion of your friends, but as a writer, you can understand this. You can't prove Frances Crager's been kidnapped. But we have the proof that she passed phony checks. That's why you've got to talk to the Bunko squad until there's some proof she's been kidnapped. So let's talk. Just tell us all you know about her and we'll find her. First, you must give me your word that everything I tell you will be in strictest confidence. Francis is a close friend of practically every important person in Hollywood. And they want her found, don't you understand? Not arrested. Sure. Now, what about the spaghetti queen stuff she's been stringing you with? It's macaroni. And she hasn't been stringing anybody. 
Frances has been entertained in wealthy homes and has told us of her wonderful plans to help the people of her native land, Yugoslavia. You see, the people in that country speak so many different dialects, it makes it awfully... Oh, my dear I think that's simply wonderful. It's the most altruistic thing I've ever heard. Yes, As a producer for Colossal Pictures Incorporated, I can safely say it's not only altruistic, it's all terrific. <laughs> really, Francis, I think the whole world should know what you're going to do. Oh, please. I do not want the world to know. I do not want anyone to know. It must be a secret. For I do not want the credit for helping the people I love. You're so frightfully genuine. That's the real reason all Hollywood has taken you to its heart. Mm. They tell me in Yugoslavia I have also inherited the title of Duchess. Really? But I will not have it so. I wish to be just one of my people. Uh, I know I'm hopelessly dull, but how can you teach them uh, what was it you wanted to teach them? Oh, you cannot understand. The poor little children, they must learn to speak three different dialects in my country before they can speak to each other. It is so hard. Dialects, there should be a law against. But we take plenty gross out of that country with pictures right now. Ah, that's the point. They love the moving pictures. I shall spend my fortune to have pictures made for them in one popular dialect. They will fool all speak one instead of three. That's an idea. Wow. It's not only colossal, it's big. But you haven't heard all of it. Tell them, Francis. I shall establish a fund in the schools to teach English so they may enjoy the regular American film. Then on a silver platter, you should be getting the Academy Award. Oh, it is so embarrassing that I have not my money yet. You will never tell us anything about yourself. Where did this fortune come from? Yes, tell it. My uncle, Anton Clement, in Yugoslavia, died and leave my brother and I a string of macaroni factories. Also, eight million dollars between us. Oh, it is very sad. Ah, I must wait for the estate to be settled. Oh, yeah, don't worry, really I'm certain that Frances Krager is in danger of some sort. The news of a fortune like that will get around. And she's such a sincere and trusting soul. Oh, we're all most anxious about her. Yes, I'm sure you are. Just how much did she get into, uh, how much did you help her? That is not the point. Even if I knew I wouldn't mention it, we want her protected. That is all I can tell you. So I'll come back tomorrow and expect to get some report of her from you. Oh, we'll do everything we can. And please remember to be discreet. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. I don't know. We'd better go easy. Why should she have killed the golden geese with that rubber paper? <laughs> That's mixing metaphors. Let's see what the banker with the bouncing paper has to say. This is Deputy Sheriff Willie of the Bunko Squad. Let me speak to your manager. Maybe he was one of her tea-drinking partners, too. Hello? I'm calling to find out what you're going to do with that surprise check Francis Crager gave you. Sure, it's a Bunko Squad. He doesn't think we're at all nice. <laughs> sure, there's some mistake. A bad check's always a mistake. A bad one. Of course, she's a fine woman. But have you checked up on this fortune in Yugoslavia? Oh, you think it would be insulting to her? All right. We just wondered. So that is that. And when a hard-shell banker blubbers all over his vest about a woman with a beautiful soul... And with her $650 paper hanging under his nose... Who are we to doubt the spaghetti and meatball queen? It's macaroni and bologna. Sheriff's office, Willie speaking. Oh, so your bank got the other 650 check. Yeah, I was talking to him. He's not going to do anything about it. Oh, you are? That's fine. Just come right on down. Goodbye. The other banker doesn't believe in any Yugoslovakian Santa Claus. He's going to swear out a warrant for Francis, and that's all we need. Why, the old meanie. To the home of Francis Krager went Detectives Willie and Penny Witt. The officers sought information. Yes. Good morning. This is the home of Frances Crager, isn't it? Yes, but she's not here. We know she's not here. We're investigating her disappearance. Oh, I'm so glad. Won't you come in? Thank you. I see you know that she's disappeared. Yes, I'm Mrs. Gray, her housekeeper. So many of her friends have been calling up. She has more friends than anyone I ever worked for. And I'm as worried as they are about her. Do you think anything has happened to her? Well, we don't think so. Uh, you knew her quite well. Can you tell us anything about her that might give us some idea where she is? Only that with everyone knowing about her fortune, she might be in danger. 
She's so kind to everyone and so unsuspecting. I'm really frightened. Did anyone ever have anything against her? Did she have any enemies? Not a one in the world. Everybody loved her. Well, then we're going to have to make an unusual request. We'd like to look through some of her personal effects. Letters and that sort of thing, you know. It might give us some clue as to where she is. Certainly. Just come upstairs. Thank you. If anything's happened to her, I'm going to feel just terrible. I was more of a friend to her than a servant. She was that way with everybody. She was just like a queen. So we've heard. There's a room. If there's anything else I can do, just let me know. Thank you. We will. This is a queen's boudoir, all right. Yeah. Hey, we better go plenty easy. At least keep our feet off the bedspread. Why is it that every time I've been up late the night before, I've got to work in a bedroom the next day? <laughs> Uh-oh. Torn up letters in the wastebasket. You patch them together while I look through the dresser drawers. You always give me the interesting work. Yeah. There's enough clothes here for the Yugoslovakian army if it was female. Well, these letters aren't any puzzle. They all tell the same story. And the signatures look like the real McCoy. They're from some of the biggest shots in the picture business. Invitations to parties, dinners, and stuff. Here's the evidence of her trip to Europe. It's right on top here. Well, I'll bet she's been handling it recently. Well, we'll just borrow it and get some nice, fresh fingerprints. A passport? Every passport has the next of kin to be notified in case of accident. See what that one says. Well, well, well. Mrs. Sally Nelson, Southgate, California. Relationship daughter. Ha, <laughs> ha, Sally's going to have some visitors if we can just find Southgate. money wouldn't bring anything but grief to Mom. She just ain't the type to have a lot of money. Well, then you're sure she did have it left to her? Of course. I saw it announced in the paper. What paper? Why, the one her husband wrote for. Oh, I see. He wasn't your father. Nope. My pa was a cowboy. But Mom left him and married a doctor in Salt Lake City, and then she left him and married Frank Krager in Chicago. She hasn't had a happy life. Yeah, but she has gotten around a lot. <laughs> Now, this husband she has for the time being uh, is a writer for the paper that announced her inheritance? Yeah, and right after it, she got over 5,000 proposals for marriage for men that had heard about the money. Hmm. Ain't it awful how mercenary some people are? Of course, Mother's good-looking, but none of the men ever even seen her. So she didn't take any of them up. Not even at the suggestion of her present husband? No, Frank's crazy about her. He gave her the money to go to the old country when she inherited all the macaroni factories. He financed the trip, eh? Mm. Well, do you suppose you could give us any addresses in Chicago where your mother might visit? Well, I never knew anything about her boyfriends. Yeah. <coughs> the uh, addresses don't have to be in any specific classification. Just any place she might visit. You know, even with platonic friends. Well, I can give you a couple of addresses. But they ain't platonic friends. They're Americans. Oh, well, they'll do very nicely. That'll save us the trouble of getting an interpreter. And very quietly and discreetly, the Chicago police arrested Francis Krager on April 15th, 1934. Miss Marjorie Fairchild, an investigator for District Attorney Buren Pitts, flew east to bring back the blonde idealist. But upon her arrival in Los Angeles, her influential friends rallied to rescue her from the authorities before she could be questioned. I certainly hope they won't have her handcuffs. It'll be like putting the Mona Lisa in the stocks. Oh, my dear, they wouldn't dare. I'd see the mayor. So chastoy. A scenario it would make. A scenario. It, it gives me a mucus of an idea. I'll write that story if it takes every writer on the lot to do it. You really should get her to play the leading part. She's just perfect for it. There she is now, Francis. Oh, hello, Francis. Francis, yes, here we are. Oh, my dear faithful friend. I'm overcome with emotion that you have not forgotten me. And I am, oh, I'm covered with shame that you should see me so. We have the best lawyer in town for we you. We won't let them persecute you. No, just tell them who you are, darling. It is the enemies of my country that steal me away. They wish to hold my country down. What the really? story? It'll be magnanimous. These enemies, they do not wish to see my people speak one language. Oh, it is so cruel. The poor little children. Yeah. The yeah, first yeah. scene will be terrific. It'll be a mother teaching the baby to say mama in three dialects. The baby gets disgusted and says, uh, nuts. Oh, my. But for you, my friends, I will carry on. These enemies of my country are the ones who, uh, what you call, frame me. They force me to sign the checks. 
They know will put me in prison when I do not have the money of my own. They wish to put me out of the way and keep my people ignorant. It is very sad. You will be freed immediately. No matter what the bail is, we will not allow these to even question you. It will be a crime. Oh, why must crusaders always be crucified? I've already got the title, uh, The Crusade for Love. When the baby grows up, he tries to make love to the girl in the wrong dialect. She gets the wrong idea and oh, sucks him. Oh, please. But you must not make fun of my people's tragedy. It is serious. It is real. Oh, sure, but can I help it if real life sounds like a third-rate scenario? Released under $5,000 bail, Francis Craiger once again became the idol of the idealists. And then one morning, the unfortunate gentleman who had furnished her bond received a personal message from the macaroni queen. With spelling as puzzling as the queen herself, he was informed... When you read this, I will be beyond... Where there is no more trouble, no more. I have decided to end it all. Look for my body in Santa Monica, in Waterfront. For that's where I'm going tonight. Again, officers Willie and Pennywit return to the woman's home. For the life of me, I can't see why you didn't turn this over to the homicide squad and be done with it. Her body's been floating around in Santa Monica Bay since last night. You mean you really think our macaroni queen has ended in the soup? Well, sure. I could stand a swim there right now, but it's officially out of our hands. Penny, I'm surprised at you being so callous. Well, here's her house. Still as elegant as ever. Not even any signs of mourning on it. Now for a talk with the housekeeper. Oh, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. I see you remember us. I just wanted to know when you saw Mrs. Crager last. Why, just last night. She left for Santa Monica and didn't say when she would return. There you are. That proves it. Did you think she was hiding here in the cellar? Did she seem downcast or sad before she left? No. As a matter of fact, she seemed quite gay and happy. You don't say. In good spirits, eh? Just trying to bore yourself up before she took the final dive. What do you mean? Take a look at this letter. She drowned herself. Drowned herself? Why, the lousy phone. Oh, she walked huh? out on you. Oh, but you spoke so kindly of her when we were here before. That was when I thought I, should, I was going to get paid. But you called her well, phony. Do you have any reason to believe she was? Reason? Of course I have reason. And I hope you guys get her quick. Get her? You mean you think she's alive? She didn't drown? Of course she didn't. She's not honest enough to give a fish a square meal. We're interested in your personal opinions of her, Mrs. Gray, but... Uh... Do you have any actual proof that she didn't drown herself? Proof? Of course I have. Do you think I'd be talking this way if I didn't have? Well, so far, we don't know what to think, but we would like to know what this proof is. Yeah, we want to know. Well, that's what I've been trying to tell you, but you've been talking your head. Now, off. let's be calm, Mrs. Gray. Uh, <coughs> we'll keep her perfectly still, and you speak your little piece. Well, it's very simple. Before she went to throw her lily white body in the brink, she packed all her clothes and took them with her. <laughs> For two years, Frances Quaker led the authorities on a transcontinental woman hunt. Whether she was held by the enemies of her native country or whether she thought herself above being on speaking terms with the police was a matter of conjecture. On June 19, 1936, the famous writer once again called upon Detectives Willie and Pennywitz in their office. Of course I still think she's innocent. All her friends do, but that's not the point. The point is we want her found. So do we. So that's about as pointless as a pretzel. We've made every possible effort to find her. We know she's alive. She's been seen in Chicago. And while Yugoslavia informs us that there are no macaroni factories there, she can claim, still they're most friendly toward her. Yeah, they call her their dollar princess. And they don't know what it's all about either. She is a wonderful character. The fact that she can't find herself and you can't find her is proof that she is held by some sinister and evil force. Yeah, we don't need that as an excuse for not finding her. Our greatest difficulty comes from people like you, sir. Who wouldn't and won't let us make a complete investigation of the case. Well, that's what I came to see you about. You promised not to publicize her case, and we have decided to release you from that promise. We feel that if you publish her picture in detective magazines, uh, she is such an unusual person, someone may have seen her and been offered a reward for information about her. That's a good idea. Now you're acting sensible. Oh, but mind you, we intend to keep her in safe hands once we find her. You will not be allowed to pursue this ridiculous idea that she is a fraud. <laughs> In October 1936, while a valiant amateur sluice over the entire country poured leads into the Bunkle squad offices, 
a good-looking blonde was being questioned in New York Harbor by R.B. Shipley, chief of the passport division. According to this passport, your name is Harriet Ashley. But of course. Uh, how long have you been in Europe? I go in July. Did you go directly to Yugoslavia? But of course. How did you know? Oh, I see so many different nationalities. It's a hobby of mine to guess where they went when they return home. That's not my home. I visit a friend there. <laughs> Well, no matter how long anyone has been in America, I can always tell where they used to live. Now that you've played your game, may I go? No, no. I have something here that might interest you, if I can just find it. Oh, I'm in a great hurry. Now, please. Uh, now, uh, just a minute, just a minute. I have a picture here somewhere of a woman that looks just like you. I can't remember her name. Doesn't matter. My name is Ashley. Yes, of course, of course. But a coincidence like this is too unusual to let pass without investigation. I mean, I must call it your attention. She might be your sister. I do not have any sister, and I'm not interested in this coincidence. I insist ah, that... Ah, here it is, here it is. Now, look at that. You've got to admit it certainly looks like you. Mm, yes. <laughs> that is a coincidence. You have a remarkable memory. Goodbye. Now, now, just a minute. This woman's name is... Uh, Crager, Francis Crager. Do you mean to say that's not your name or a name that you have used? I told you my name is Ashley. That's all I have to say. Well, I guess that finishes our conversation. But you'll have to wait until I get these fingerprints compared. I will not trouble you. I am Francis Crager. Yes. Well, you're wanted by the California authorities, Mrs. Crager. But you won't have to worry about that... At least you won't have to worry about it for six months because we're going to keep you in the federal house of detention for that period. But why? Oh, just for falsifying a statement for passport. After that, the California sunshine will feel pretty good. Even the very little bit you're going to get. After a brief sorting in the courts, fighting against being returned to Los Angeles, Francis Crager was brought back. And once again, it was with no suggestion of the black sheep returning home that she was greeted by her long-lost friends. But her daughter had another feeling. Sally, my little baby daughter, will come to my arms. Oh, now, don't give me that stuff, Mom. I came here to talk turkey. Oh, you always did try to break my heart, to treat me so, like this, after not seeing me for years. You never used to have that accent when I knew you. Was it that writer guy you married that got you that way? Sally, I'm living in another world than the one I knew when you were little. Yeah? Well, at least that world didn't have bars around it. Oh, you don't understand. It is... Sure, it's all a mistake. Your son William made a little mistake, too. It was about who owned an automobile, and he's serving three years in the Michigan Reformatory. You didn't know that, did you? Oh, <laughs> the think that a son of mine should do such a thing. Well, I don't know where he got his ideas, but they worked out just about the same way yours seemed to. Oh, oh now don't start blubbering. I stuck up for you when the cops came out to my house, but that's just it. I don't want them coming out there anymore, and I don't want you to open your mouth about even knowing me. All right, <laughs> you don't want me to. Well, I don't. You may have all the money in the world for all I know, but you can take it and stick uh, to your part of the country and... I'll stick to mine. Oh, it's so cruel. It's too cruel. Yes, well, you should have thought of that a few years ago. But I was poor then. Well, I am now. But I'll take care of my kids. I don't wish you any hard luck. I hope you beat the case. But just go the other way if you do, that's all. <laughs> but again, Francis Crager's friends rallied to her support. Well, Francis, uh, how do you like the lawyer we got for you? Yes, oh, he is wonderful. It is wonderful, all the things you do. Because of him, I sit here in this chamber till the trial starts. And I visit with you, my friend. It gives me such courage. Uh -huh. Just as a week would give you courage. Oh, you give and give. But the greatest thing you give me is the courage to... Oh, what do you say? to take it. <laughs> in the courtroom, it's not even a sellout. No, uh, no one knows about the fortune. Or it would be fact. You're absolutely yes. right. Oh, everything's going to be all right. Yes, it's got to be. My luck just can't fail me now. Your luck? Yes. Oh, of course I mean 
my luck in having you for friends. Oh, and this woman has been persecuted, not only by the enemies of civilization, but by the law itself. The law refused to look into her soul and therefore misjudged her. Womankind at its best is personified in the aims and desires of this noble creature. She is a shining example to all those who seek to forget themselves in the thought of others. What could the law say against them? It is my purpose to prove that this woman has not and never has had any property in Yugoslavia or anywhere else. The people will prove that this woman came to America and to the city of Los Angeles for the sole purpose of bilking certain persons and institutions of funds which did not rightfully belong to her. She has taken advantage of her friends in the motion picture industry and in financial circles. She has not and never has had any idea of giving them any value in return for their money. Stop the trial. Your Honor, I wish to plead guilty to the charge. In just a moment, we will furnish concluding facts regarding our program. In the brief interval, just a reminding word. For the complete protection of your motor and its longer life, Real Lube, the newest and finest motor oil sold in the West. For the maximum in power, speed, and mileage, Rio Grande Cracked, the gasoline of real police car performance. <laughs> Deputies Willie and Pennywit had built up an airtight case against the Yugoslavian dollar princess. She was sentenced to 15 months in the county jail to be followed by a 10-year probationary period and was ordered to repay her friends their losses. Definitely, this was another crime that did not pay. Sheriff's office calling all cars, attention all cars, a cancellation broadcast 255 regarding missing person. The suspect in this case is now in custody. That's all. We're in Abandoned Bricks. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>